Welcome to the Maria Liberati Show, where food meets art, travel, and life. What does food mean to you? Tell us in 60 seconds or less in a recorded audio soundbite. Hashtag it the Maria Liberati Show and post on social media or a social media post of 50 words or less. Again, post on social media. And if your segment or post is used for an upcoming segment, you'll be sent a free copy of my Gourmand World award-winning book, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking. So what does food mean to you? In celebration, of October being Italian Heritage Month, I'll also answer that question. Food to me means the art of turning something simple into something special, using whatever ingredients that you have on hand and making do with whatever you have to turn something simple into something special. That refers to cooking, of course. And food to me means family and fun and friends. And what does being Italian mean to me? Well, I am an American, but I do have Italian heritage. And being Italian to me means being part of a shared language and a culture and appreciating the aesthetic sense of many things, style, appreciating opera. Of course, my grandparents gave me the love of opera. It doesn't mean that if you're Italian, you appreciate or love opera. There are many people that aren't Italian that do, but my grandparents who are from Italy gave me a love for opera and an understanding of opera. And even if you're not Italian, you can still celebrate Italian Heritage Month by sharing in all the great Italian recipes that are out there. There are many on my blog at marialiberati.com. In my book series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, which you can grab your copies on my website at marialiberati.com or on many of the booksellers out there, Amazon, Barnes and Noble. And you can also catch me on Fridays on my live streams on Instagram and Facebook. So this month I'll be doing some Italian pasta dishes in celebration of World Pasta Day and National Pasta Day that happen to be in October also. And in honor of Italian Heritage Month, my guest who's coming on a little bit later is Frankie Imbergamo, who's cookbook author, and he's also an actor, and he is from Boston's North End, that's in Boston, Massachusetts, and the North End is actually Boston's Little Italy, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the history of Boston's North End and what it was like growing up in the North End, but also in honor of Italian Heritage Month, I wanted to give a recipe for Pasta Norma, which is one of my Friday favorite dishes that I'll be doing on my live streams on Instagram and Facebook, and also read from a diary that I did on a visit to a little town in the mountains of Abruzzo. So it's a little town called Chilano. Hidden away in the bayous of this tiny little town in the mountains of Abruzzo, Chilano, I discovered a gem of a museum hiding in the center. It is the Museo Paludi, P-A-L-U-D-I. You can actually find it online at Paludi Musee Paludi. It. But besides the artwork saved from the churches in the devastating earthquake in the city of L'Aquila that were cataloged so carefully and hidden away in the back room of that museum, artisans from all over Europe go there to restore painstakingly the masterpieces that are priceless. An exhibit of Francesco Sigiliani and his career was highlighted in the center of the museum when I visited this museum. You may not recognize the name or face, but he was the person responsible for discovering Maria Callas, the great opera singer Maria Callas. And he was one of the most important directors of some of the most famous operas and opera singers. Housed there were some of the original, albeit handwritten, librettos for many of the operas. Sigiliani was also famous for saying that he learned to read musical notes before he learned to read words. And 
1948, Maria Callas triumphed in the opera Norma, and returning home from the museum, I had a strong urge to put on a pot of water and make a dish of pasta Norma. So here's my recipe for pasta Norma, and it's from my diary about this visit to this exhibit in the museum in the mountains of Abruzzo. But this is also one of the dishes that I'll be doing on my live Instagram and Facebook stories. And it's really simple. So the ingredients for pasta Norma are one pound of spaghetti, one pound of fresh red ripe plum tomatoes. Now, if you can't find ripe, fresh plum tomatoes, you can use canned tomatoes, but make sure it's a really good quality tomato. Three small fresh eggplants, two cloves of garlic chopped finely, one handful of fresh basil washed and chopped, four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, and then another two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Wash the eggplants and slice them thinly. Place the slices into a bowl of cold water, with a dash of vinegar and a sprinkle of sea salt. Let them soak for two hours. Peel the tomatoes and take out the seeds. Cut the tomatoes into small pieces. Place the olive oil into a saute pan with the chopped garlic. Heat till the garlic begins to turn golden. Remove from the heat. Place in the tomatoes, the chopped basil, a pinch of salt and pepper. Place over low to medium heat and saute for 15 minutes stirring. Saute this over low to medium heat. While that's going on, you can drain and dry the eggplant slices. And in another saucepan, you're going to put the other two tablespoons of olive oil, the extra virgin olive oil, that is. You're going to saute the eggplant slices in the olive oil. Brown them on both sides. Place the eggplant slices on paper towels to soak up any excess oil. Once you've done that, you're going to boil a pot of water, cook your spaghetti till it's al dente, and read the package that the pasta comes in. That will tell you the suggested amount of time for that exact brand of pasta. Once the pasta is done, you're going to drain it and place the spaghetti in the saute pan with the tomato sauce. Then you're going to place in the eggplant slices. You're going to toss that to coat the pasta with the tomatoes. Serve this with Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, freshly grated, please. And you can serve it with a dry red wine, or you might even feel the urge to break into the Aria Casta Diva from the Opera Norma, of course. I am so excited today. I have a really good friend of mine. He's a cookbook author, chef. He's won contests with Emma Lagasse for having the best meatballs. He is an actor extraordinaire. He's my friend, Frankie in Bergamo. And if anybody is qualified to tell us about the history of Boston's Little Italy, it's definitely Frankie. Frankie, hey, how are you doing today? Hey, Julia, how you, I'm doing good. How are you doing today? How's the weather in Boston today? Well, it's about in the, it was in the 50s today, like high 50s, old 60s. It was kind of a little overcast, and uh, it's getting starting to get cooler compared to like what we've had, you know? Yeah, I like think the fall, the yeah. fall is here now. You it, know? It, it, you know? it definitely is here. It's definitely here. And yeah. it's so nice, you know, I forgot to mention too, it's nice. I like people to be able to travel through my podcast and visit places because, you know, not everybody can travel now. So we're no, taking a trip yeah. to Boston, Boston's Little Italy with you today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, what they did, in the, what, they, what they're doing right now, and uh, on the main drag in the little Italy is called Hanover Street. Uh huh. Approximately, about, I'd say about 80, 80 restaurants on that street. And what they did is they had all the they had the, the the residents move their cars out of the parking spaces, so all the restaurants can put outside seating. Oh wow! So it looks like it actually looks like Italy. <laughs> So, oh my goodness! Yes, yeah, sounds like. Yeah. So yeah. we drive down the street, like in, uh, like even in the, like they have now. All of the restaurants used to open about four or five o'clock. Now they're opening for lunch and for dinner. So it's getting wow. busy. There's a lot of people getting... out there in the afternoon. And yeah. Then and then, yeah. It looks it's yeah. nice. I mean, they did a good job. They put like uh, you know, flower pots. They put umbrellas, and they, you know, they they, dark, oh, they wow. made it look pretty. Look, you know, nice. Yeah. You know? 
Yeah, that sounds real nice. Well, I know you grew up there. You grew up in the North End. Can you tell a little bit about growing up in the North End of you know Boston's Little Italy there? Yes, I grew up on I grew up on the lower end of Hanover Street, down by uh-huh. near the, the Coast Guard base, not too far from there. I grew up mm-hmm. down that end there, and it's all the brownstone buildings and you know, every everybody in the neighborhood. You know, in the North End, everybody, like 99.5% were Italian. <laughs> <And I'm> like, <laughs> now it's like, it's changed now. It's like, you know, we don't know if there's like 30% Italians left down there. But they, mm-hmm. but they keep the cultural, they keep the culture alive by having all the Italian restaurants and people still visit on the weekends. And, and in, uh, in the summertime, we have these, uh, these, these societies, like these, we have, they call, we have Italian festivals on every weekend in the North End. Mm-hmm. From which is dry up until Labor Day, they have like St. Anthony, they have the Madonna della Cava, then the, uh-huh. the, the Madonna del Socoso, the Fisherman Feast. They uh-huh. have, um, they have St. Agrippina. We have like all these big feasts. They're all four days long. Wow. On the weekend. And, uh-huh. and, on the, and, then they, and then on the Sunday, they march through the streets of the North End and they, and people are out their window and they, and they give donations and they pin it on the same, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, yeah, and that's kind of old. Know. That's the way they used to do it way back. So, did they do that when you were growing up? Is that something that's just, continued? Yes, when I was growing up, I was actually a member of the Madonna del Cava Society. It was across oh, the street from my house, and all my uh-huh. friends and their families, we all grew up there. Uh huh. And, and we used to carry the saints and you know, do all that stuff, and, and you know, right. but it's it's a it was a, it was an old school traditional thing, you know. It it is it, it is, is an old is a, school. But the North End yeah. is a very, very, uh, it's a tour. It's on the Freedom Trail in Boston. So oh, we get a lot of, the, the restaurants get a lot of tourists. Because uh-huh. we have, uh, in the North End, there's, you know, Paul Revere House. We have mm-hmm. the Old North Church. That's all mm-hmm. on the Freedom Trail. So when people visit uh, Boston, they, they get this Freedom Trail tour. And then you go to the, see the Constitution. You see the Old North Church, the, free, the Paul Revere House. And then what they do is some of these tours now, they they incorporated with these these people that they do like they call foot tours. Uh, they, it's a culinary tour. Uh-huh. And what they do is they, they take them from they take them to like uh, one of the pastry stores, have like a cappuccino and, and a cannoli, and then uh-huh. they'll, they'll bring then they'll, they'll bring them for lunch somewhere, like something reasonable, nothing really right. expensive. You know, right. they, they, they they'll include that in their in their tour. You know, so uh-huh. that's a good thing. That's how they started doing that about ten years or fifteen years ago. Well, wow. it's really yeah, that's, a good idea. that's a- yeah, it does. It sounds like a great way to, to tour um, the the North End, to tour, well, to tour Boston, to tour the city of Boston, but get a taste of the, of the North yeah. End. And I didn't really mention, but I'm sure everybody figured this out, but the North End is Boston's Little Italy. So I know, like, in Philly, we call South Philly, our, that's our Little Italy, but in Boston, it's the North End. That's their Little Italy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. so, you've been there. Yeah, well, I make, I make yeah. Oh, yeah, and I love Boston. Boston's a great city, so hopefully I'll be back soon. But you know what I wanted to ask you? So you said you learned to cook from your mother and grandmother. Do you remember what the first thing is that you learned to cook? <laughs> well, my mother, my mother, my grandmother, my mother's mother, she used to come over. She lived in the North End, too. And, uh, uh-huh. Not with us, but she lived, like, uh, maybe about um, maybe about a quarter of a mile away in the North End. On, mm-hmm. She lived on Prince Street. We lived on Hanover. Uh-huh. So I'll tell you about a, about about a ten minute walk. But anyway, she'd come over on the weekends, and they would do they would cook all this Italian food. And growing up, like I would watch them, and I'd ask them, you know, how you make that. And she should they would say, watch me do this, watch me do that. <laughs> and I, I and I and I kind of like remembered a lot of stuff. And then as I grew uh-huh. up as a you know teenager, and I started to. Right. I started up cooking the social clubs, you know, mm-hmm. around, around Boston, on the North End. Like on Saturdays, we would cook. Uh-huh. You know, oh. and then, you know, and a lot of, the, a lot of the, the older members, they used to cook too. Like, and, they, and you'd learn from them as well because a lot of the older members, they, had, they owned restaurants as well. You know, their uh-huh. families owned restaurants. So they used to do like, like I think like, like, they used to, like on a Saturday, a big thing was tripe. They said they uh-huh. put tripe in, in the in the gravy, the red sauce, and they used to put the grated cheese and the hot peppers, you know. And uh, uh-huh. they, used to have it with the, they used to have it with the homemade wine and some crispy Italian bread. And that was like a traditional thing almost every Saturday. But the people who didn't like that, they would make like calamari and things like that, you know. Uh-huh. So, uh, it, it, but they, they, there was always like some cooking going on in each club, like they call social clubs. Right. So, they, 
so that's the way it was growing up. But and now today it's changed a lot. So it's a little different today. You mm-hmm. know? I mean, yeah. I don't have any, all my relatives are not there no more now. They're all in the suburbs. So uh-huh. I live even myself. I live like like five six miles north of the North End, uh-huh. which is called called Medford, Mass. And that's uh-huh. and where I live is a, it's a big Italian community too. Like the population right. is about. It's probably about sixty-five thousand the population of people, yeah. and about uh-huh. out of that, I'll bet at least I'll bet half, fifty percent is Italian. Wow! Well, you know? Yeah, I noticed that when I was there. I I think mm-hmm. that's definitely a real Italian neighborhood where you're at anyway, in that sort, right? Right, right? Yeah, because uh, a lot of people that that you know they were forced out of the north end, and some place they, you know, they people were paying short money rents and all that, and now the, it's like a prime property because. When you live in the North End, you can walk to downtown Boston to all your to all the jobs like you know Fidelity and John Hancock insurance companies and all those big you know like stock market mm-hmm. places, all those um, banks, big banks. You know people walk to work; they don't need a car. Uh, oh, know? that's nice. Well, that's actually so, really nice too. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely nice. I yeah, guess it's a good you can. It's a walking city. It's a walking city. Uh huh. You can walk. Like, you can walk if you walk like like two two. Up to like maybe two miles, you could be mm-hmm. down by on Newberry Street, you know, Back Bay they call it, and that's uh-huh. where the property places and all the big stores are. And you know, it's right. like, you know, it's a walking city. It's very, very good. It's a nice place to live because, like I said, you don't really need a car. Oh, that's you know? great. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. that's definitely good. And I know there's great places to eat at, so you can just walk yeah. if you want to go out to eat or for a cappuccino. And you know, yeah. I know you showed me there's these places there for you can just get a cappuccino or a coffee and just go out. And yeah, that's what that I think that makes it a really nice, definitely a nice place to live. Also, that's what most people do. They go to the they go to the Italian restaurants and have a nice meal, and, mm-hmm. and instead of having the dessert at the restaurant. Not everyone does, but myself and my family and friends, we usually we go out and eat, we'll go for dinner, and then we'll go to, like, one of the coffee shops after, and we'll have uh-huh. some, you know, you know, we'll have, like, some, like, uh, after-dinner drink and maybe, like, mm-hmm. a cappuccino and maybe a cannoli or uh-huh. a cannogini or sfugadello, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever they have. Yeah. And you can you can hear some Italian music, you know, they put some Italian music on in there, and it's a nice little atmosphere, and it breaks the night up a little, too, you know, it's nice, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, it is, and it gives you a feel. I think it's nice because you get a feel of kind of being in an Italian area. You know, you're not in Italy, but you're in Boston, and you get a a little bit of a feel of, you know, being Italian um, by being able to do that. And I think it's really nice that that type of of a feel and and that type of atmosphere still exists there. That's Mm -hmm. really nice. So. Sounds like it's a nice, definitely a nice place to live. But I don't know if you know this, but we have the, one of the oldest pizzerias places in the in the in the country. You know, you yeah. had told me about that. So what is yeah. that place? I think you you took us past there. What is this? Uh, what's it's that called, place? Uh, it's called Pizzeria Regina. That's it. And, uh, it's on Thatcher Street in the North End. Now mm-hmm. they branched out a little. They have uh, uh-huh. they have one in, where I live in Medford, but it's a lot uh-huh. different. They have a bar. It's called the North End Bar. They have uh-huh. like a you know, it's like a, a bigger, like bigger restaurant. But the original one, they still have the brick oven, and that's over 150 years old. Wow! And, oh my and, uh, God! The pizza, the pizza is like I don't know. The pizza is unbelievable because like, they get, they use imported mozzarella, and they and they, they make their own dough, and they have plus they have that that brick oven that makes a big. big oh thing. yeah, that makes it really really good. Yeah. yeah. What style of a pizza is in Boston? Is it a thicker style, thinner? Is there a style, like a different style that they have there, or it's yeah, just they have, the Pizza Regina is like the thin style of pizza, you know? Uh huh. But, the, okay. but there's a place, there's a place up the street on Hanover Street. They make Sicilian pizza, the square right. pizzas, and that's uh-huh. the Sicilian style. It's called Umberto's. They have won a, a lot of awards too. You know, they they open at 10:30 a.m. Mm-hmm. and they close around 2:30, quarter to three. Whatever they sell out, that's it for the day. And oh, wow. You can't, the places you can't get in, there's a line every day. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, there's actually a place like that in, in Little Italy in South, well, in South Philly. There's a, a bakery like that. It's the same thing. They can't tell you what time they close. Mm-hmm. They'll just say, when we're done, when we're done with everything, then we close. Yeah. <laughs> so. well, they only have three things on their menu. They have cheese to sing and pizza, right? Uh-huh. They have pin, pinzerotis, and they have calzones. Uh-huh. You know, and that's all they have. They have beer and wine, and you wait in line, and when you get the food, you just take it to a table, an open table, and you eat. No waitresses, uh-huh. no, no waiters, uh-huh. nothing like that. 
Oh, wow. Is that Pizza Regina? Is that the one, Pizza Regina? Is that what you're talking This is called Umberto's. Oh, this is Umberto's. Okay. Oh, wow. So, Frankie, I know you, I want everybody to know, too, that you also came to culinary prominence by winning this recipe competition from Emil, on Emil Lagasse's show. So, I wanted you to tell us a little bit about that. When you first submitted your recipe, how far did you think it would go? Okay, that's right. Here's what happened. In 2003, I wrote a cookbook called The Good Life, Famous right. Italian Recipes. In 2005, there was a big, big, it was a national contest on the Emerald, Emerald Live show. So uh-huh. Emerald, Emerald Lagasse was looking for some people to send in their bio and send in their recipe and talk about the recipe and why you think yours is the best and all that. So I did all mm-hmm. that, and uh, I was working for the post office at the time as a supervisor, and uh-huh. it was about it was about 7 o'clock in the morning one morning I got a call from the, the Food Network. They said, gee, this is uh, the Emerald Live show. I'm, I'm the producer for the Food Network, and uh, you're, in the, you're in the top 100. There's 1,500 uh-huh. contestants. You're, with the, you're mm-hmm. in the top 100. So we yeah. just want to give you a call and tell you that. And then mm-hmm. we'll get back to you with, with more more information as we go along. A week mm-hmm. later, I got another call. The guy says, you're in the top 25. So wow. I said, oh, geez. I says, I got excited because I said, there's 1,500 people. You know, I got to go shoot to win this thing, you know. And then about, uh, I think about maybe another week after that, then the guy called. He says, Emerald Lagasse, he picked you as the top winner. With, and he picked three other winners you know, along with you, and we're, uh-huh. we were going to come to Boston. So uh-huh. he gave me the date and the time, when I met him in the North End, and it's uh, the Italian butcher shop. This, uh-huh. this guy, named Susie, he has an Italian, called you a Brucese meat market. Uh-huh. You know, he's, I met them in there at 7 a.m. in the morning. All the Food Network crew were there with the cameras, and I was buying the ingredients to make the meatballs. I was buying the fresh hamburgers. Then I, then I did some walking and talking through the North, through the North End, mm-hmm. and then they came to my house in Medford, and I made mm-hmm. a live product for them, and I on TV, and they filmed me. And they stayed yeah. in my house for about eight, eight hours. We had some wine, we had some uh-huh. meatball, meatballs and pasta all day long, and they stayed here <laughs> about eight hours. They filmed me, <laughs> and, wow. and then uh, it was it was a good time. We had a lot of fun. And then yeah. about about two weeks after that, they flew me and my wife over to New York City studios, the Food Network studios, and I was on with Emerald Lagasse live with the other uh-huh. three winners and. And their spouses. And we uh-huh. all sat at the high talk tables. And Emerald uh-huh. comes out of the back room and he comes right over to me and he shakes my hand. He goes, hey, glad to have you on. You know, good congratulations. And then, and then while he was making the recipes, he called me up to the stove. He says, hey, Frank, you want to come and smell the gravy? Come on up. You know, <laughs> all the people were oh. clapping. It was, a, it was so much fun. And then, he, you know, they treat you like a, like a, like a, um, like a celebrity for the weekend. They gave us, uh, uh-huh. they, they flew us back and forth from Boston to New York. They gave us the hotel room. They, they uh-huh. gave us, uh, gave, they gave us a chauffeur and everything. So yeah, it was nice, you know. Was, that was a, a nice Once in a lifetime. You know? yeah. Oh, yeah. Once in a lifetime. You, you see now what happened? That's how the acting started. You're always telling me about these famous celebrities that you're in a film with. And I'm like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? So yeah, let's let's hear about that. So that led into your acting then, right? Oh yeah, right. So here's what happened. After that show was over, after I, was uh-huh. on, I appeared live on the Emerald on the Food Network, it was a national, you know, T V show. So uh right. after that about maybe about a week or maybe a week and a half after that, I got a uh-huh. call from uh, Boston Casting. They're the uh-huh. biggest casting agency in Massachusetts. So they called uh-huh. me, they said they said, Frank, we saw you on they said, Congratulations, we saw you on the Food Network. And you're a local guy in Boston. And we're going to be doing a movie in the North End with Danny Aiello. And the movie's called Stiffs. So wow. he says, they says, why don't you come to the studio tomorrow? And uh, I think you'd be a good fit for the movie. So I went up uh-huh. there. Then I auditioned. And the next thing you know, I was in the movie with Danny Aiello. I'm in, I'm in a scene with him, a couple of scenes with him. And uh, that was my first movie. And wow. now, in between this time, I'm just ready to retire from the Postal Service. I did my 30 years of civil uh-huh. service and manager, uh-huh. supervisor, all that. I was getting out, so I have. So I said to myself, I could pursue this maybe, and maybe it'd be like, you know, see what happens, because now right. I have the time. Yeah. I went, to acting, I went to some acting school, NEMG, it's called New England Models Group, mm-hmm. and uh, I went there, they're in Manchester, New Hampshire, uh-huh. about a 45 minute ride from my home. And I mm-hmm. went there, and then I, the next thing you know, I got in the car, and I was in the game plan with The Rock, The Mall Cop, Pink Panther 2 with Steve Martin, and then they kept... I kept doing them, the proposal with Sandra Bullock, the uh-huh. fighter with Christian Bale, American Hustle. Mm-hmm. 
all these movies, they, I had a, I think it was a 2009, 10, that we were, I did a 13, 14 movies in one year. Well, and, and uh, you cooked for some of these celebrities too. I know you're always telling me you're making meatballs for them, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, it was, uh, the, the director of American Hustle, uh -huh. the fighter, his name is David O. Russell. I was taught, the, the casting director, Angela Perry, she, she, I got to know her, she's a very good friend of mine, and she goes, you know, Dave, I, David O. Russell knows you're a chef, you cook. Can, can you make three trays of eggplant for us? <laughs> I, said, well, I, said, I said, all right. So it was a, it was a Sunday morning. I went to, I, I made it, but I took it over to Angela Perry's home in Cambridge. The, the, um, all the actors and David, they were in the backyard. It was a nice warm day. And uh -huh. I needed to, they wanted me to stay with them. But I couldn't stay that day because I was doing an independent film that morning. Uh -huh. so I just drove the food off. I said, hi, goodbye. And then, but, but the, they were, they were very nice. Like Jennifer Lawrence was there, uh, Christian Bale, uh -huh. David O. Russell. They were all there, you know. And they all, wow. they, 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 they all thank you. He, 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 he sent me a nice note after that, you know, thank you. He called me, actually. He uh -huh. thanked me very much. He's a, he's a nice guy. So, uh, uh -huh. you know, you get, you get to know these people, too. Like, you know, things can happen uh, in the future. You never know, you know. So, wow. So after that, I do all that. Now, as of 2020, I've been in over 49, 50 movies. Oh, my goodness. Wow. So, you know, plus I did some independent films, and I played a couple of lead roles in those. And I uh -huh. uh, some, do some commercials. I did a big commercial for Vix, and I did mm -hmm. Jet Blue, Amtrak, and a few other ones. And wow. um, you know what happens is, you know, you, you, what happens in this business is like you become part of a core group of people in these in these uh, these casting agencies. They get to know you, and they call mm -hmm. you for all this stuff. And when you think they think you're a good fit, you know, and which uh -huh. happens quite a bit because uh, because most of the movies like. They look for people my age, or my nationality, and you know things like that. You know, so it works. I've been very, I've been very fortunate. You know, so, oh, that's uh, great. So one thing led to another. You're getting, I guess, doing that contest rate right, on Emerald Show, and then that led you to your acting. So yeah. wow, that's um, yeah, that's, that's how this all happened. You know, yeah, so yeah. I know they do. They do a lot of films in Boston, also. So that's how. You know that's great too because it's just a fit for you too because you're able you were able to get into acting and now well I don't know what the film business is doing now there but I know the film business in Boston was really booming and yeah, it was uh, yeah yeah, yeah it was doing really good and hopefully it will be picking up again I'm sure but oh that's great so yeah, what the, the, the last movie I did was actually in Rhode Island. It was in Providence. Right. It was called Vault with Chaz Palmateri was in it. Uh -huh. And, and, and um, Don, Don Johnson's in it. And I played, uh, I played like the, we were, in the, we were in a prison scene, you know? Uh -huh. we, were in, we were in the federal prison. So the movie was about this, the mob, they pulled a big fur heist while they were, in the, and they uh, orchestrated it while they were in prison. So I played uh -huh. like one of the, I, I'm in Chaz Palmateri's. He plays the mafia boss, and I'm mm -hmm. one of the guys that's in, the, in jail with him. and and I play the prison bookie. <laughs> I'm, on the, I'm on the phone. I'm on the. I'm, I'm in the. Call, I'm in the prison yard. I'm on the phone. And I'm taking numbers. <laughs> I'm never doing. You know they. They it was on. It, it, it just recently came out on. Um, I was just going to ask you. So it, oh, it did come out. And I'm sorry. What was the name of the film again? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's called uh, Vault. It's uh, on Prime Video. Vault. Okay. Oh yeah. You know what? You sent me, and I didn't get a chance to see it yet. So yeah, if anybody gets a chance to to see that, definitely you got to check that out. So I do want to ask you though. I know your meatballs are the dish that everybody, even not just in Boston, but in Boston especially, everybody asks for your meatballs. But um, and I know you're famous for that because people all over have known you especially for that since you won that contest out of all those people. My gosh, but do you have is there any dish that's like your that you're most proud of that is one of your dishes maybe from your cookbook? Um do you have a, a recipe or a dish you can tell us about that's like one of your favorites that you're most proud of? Yeah, I like um on the like more like, like uh, on the holidays like I like uh, to make seafood with pasta. Like uh lobster fra di with you know that's a that's a good dish, but like right. um, a lot of, a lot of like uh, asparagus with uh -huh. base scallops. That's one like oh, that's one. really good. Yeah, good dish. And uh, uh -huh. believe it or not, the big big you know the real big hit is the eggplant parmesan. A lot of people love that. 
Oh, you I do too. I love I eggs in the farm. I can eat that. I will ask you to make that for them. I'll give them the recipe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the one or two, you know. And uh, that's a big, big. That's that's yeah. There are a lot of people like that. And the nasty uh-huh. lasagna. People, uh, like, yeah. you know. Believe it or not, because I won the contest, the meatballs. It seems like a lot of people have difficulty making good meatballs. I don't know. I they don't know. do. They do. I, I hear know. that all the time. They don't know how to put the proper, you know, amount of ingredients. And I think a lot of people tend to put a lot of, like, too much breadcrumbs or not enough. I think that's yeah, the, yeah. you know, so do you have any tips or hints for people that are making, yeah, well, you know, wanting to make a really good meatball? Well, the best thing I can tell you is you have to get the breadcrumbs in the bakery if you're using uh-huh. breadcrumbs. Which I uh-huh. do. I go to the bakery and I get it freshly ground. The, uh-huh. Well, they they do it that month that day, you know. Oh, and yeah. I use uh, fresh. And I also use fresh parsley. And I always mm-hmm. also buy the very good pecorino romano cheese. I'll buy the locatelli. And I'll get mm-hmm. a piece and I'll I'll grind it up. I'll grate it up. And uh-huh. uh, that makes a big difference. When it's naturally nice fresh garlic. And, and, right. and you and put. And you don't want to put. And you have to put enough eggs. See, a lot of people don't put enough eggs because. Uh, if you notice, if you don't put enough eggs, they come out really hard. Mm-hmm. So you have to put, like, I, I always put, like, four eggs to every two pounds. And okay. I, if you make, so if you make less than two, if I make a pound and a half, I'll put three eggs, you know. Mm-hmm. So it depends how much I want to have. If I'm having company or, you know, I don't want to make a lot of them. And then, you know, if there's, there's only two of us. And then if I have a friend or you know, another couple come over. You're right. not gonna eat like you're not gonna eat twenty meatballs. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, they get about sixty. Because Emerald, Emerald asked me on the show, how many how many meatballs does this make? How many did you get out of like out of the two, out of you know your ingredients? Mm-hmm. I said, well, I get sixteen meatballs. He goes, uh-huh. that's when he's he's laughing. He goes, okay, sixteen meatballs coming up. I bet you everybody would like to hear what's it like. What was it like to work with Emerald? Yeah, Emerald. He's a great guy. He's from Massachusetts too. Yeah, so I was just going to ask you. I thought he was. He's not from Boston, right? But he's from Massachusetts. Yeah, he grew up like not not near me, but he grew up on the other side, like down by they call Fall River, Mass. That's uh probably about an hour from here. You know, mm-hmm. it's about an hour away. Like he goes in the he's grew up on the Fall River, Mass. Is down by the South Shore they call it. You know, uh-huh. going towards. Going towards Rhode Island, like, you know. Oh, okay. Wow. So he's from Boston, Austin. Yeah, he's a, he's a I'm great guy. State. I'm, I'm going towards New Hampshire. It was different. Uh huh. So <laughs> I'm, in the, I'm in the North Shore. He's in the South Shore. You're the, exactly. So you're, that's more nor- northern. But, um, mm. wow, that's that's great, Frankie. Wow. What a, a wide and varied career, definitely, that you have. And I, the one thing I know, I know you love what you do. You love cooking. You love acting. So that's the, I think that's probably the secret to your success. And your book, again, it's The Good Life, right? I have it right here in front of me, but it's The Good Life. And can people get that and on um, Amazon or... Well, we hit, well, it was at Barnes and Noble, but I just took it out because I, I wanted to put them in the local bookstores because a couple of stores they closed down. So uh-huh. I, I said, right now it's at the called the Boston gift sh- Boston gift shop, and you can buy uh-huh. it by telephone because you just getting. I just gave him the book, so until he gets okay. an email out of this, but he can and call the number. I'll give you this number to call. Okay. To purchase the book, like it's six one seven two two seven five nine one five. Okay, and six one seven. Call that number, and you can tell me you want to buy the Good Life by Frank and Bergamo, and uh, they'll, and they'll they'll mail it out to you. you know? Wow! And they can also contact you on Facebook. I know you're really active yeah, on you Facebook. Can contact me on Facebook, and if they want to order the book, you can do that as well. Yeah. Facebook, Frankie and Bergamo. Yep, and people can find you there, and um, yeah, find Frankie. Me, me a note and I'll get back to them, and uh, we'll set up a mailing, and you know. We'll yeah, answer. definitely, because it's definitely a fun book to read, and it's got a lot of, of really good um, recipes. Definitely, they're good good recipes that, you know, they're easy enough for people to cook, I think, too. So, um, you know, they're not difficult, complicated. You know, believe it or not, I'll tell you something quick. You know, in the North then, when growing up as a kid, on a Saturday uh-huh. Or a Sunday morning, or a Saturday afternoon, you can actually walk down any side street, and you can actually smell the people making the sauce and gravy, the meatballs. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, it sounds like, yes. It sounds like it is. You're walking down the street, you can actually smell everyone's cooked, make, you know, because everybody, like I said, growing up as a kid, everybody was Italian, and that's yeah. the first place. They, they came from Italy. A lot of them went to Boston, Philadelphia, and New York City, you know? Right. So, you know, that's where everybody went. All the Italians went. Wow. From they went to uh-huh. Boston, Brooklyn, they went to South Philly, and they went to, uh, to New York City, Manhattan, mm-hmm. you know, Mulberry Street, all that area. The Philly area, and in Philadelphia, too, the, it goes back and forth, you know, gravy or sauce, but they call it gravy, too. There are people they call it gravy, too. It's a big controversy, yeah. I just told the truth. I said, the reason why we call it, you know, in my growing up as a kid, the reason why we call it gravy is because we, we make it on Sundays. It was called mm-hmm. the Sunday gravy. When you put meat into a red sauce, when you put right. meat into a red sauce, it became the Sunday gravy. So right. that stuck with us all my life and for years and years. And I explained that on the radio and on TV. I've been on, I try to explain that because people, that's the first thing they ask. How do they get, how do you get gravy? Gravy goes on turkey or roast beef, brown gravy. So now, then I explain it, you know, because when you say gravy, they think it's like, uh, you know, I was just saying like roast beef. Or a brown turkey. gravy. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's a liquid. For me, a gravy means a liquid that you pour on top of something, and it's usually like thicker. And I know, I know, my grandparents like they all made that. It was like a thicker type of a sauce that looked like a gravy, right? So, and like you said, with the meat. You know, so the, only, the only other Italians, the only other Italians that were from Italy, from Sicily, they don't mm-hmm. call the gravy a sauce. Mm-hmm. They call it, they call it suco, S-U-C-O, suco. Well, yes, well, sugo is the Italian word for, sugo is mm-hmm. actually the Italian word for sauce. So that's what they call it in Italy, sugo, exactly. Well, but do, here in the United States, it. like the Italian, you know, the Italian neighborhoods, right, they call it gravy or sauce. So, and mm-hmm. a lot of people do, I know a lot of people do call it gravy, but that's, that's funny. Yeah. But yeah, so that's, the same thing then in uh, Boston's North End as some of the other little Italy's too that do that mm-hmm. with the gravy or sauce. Frankie, I usually ask all of my guests to tell us um, the answer to this question at the end of the segment, at the end of the, their interview. So, what does food mean to you? Well, food is very important. It means that it means probably like uh, with this food family and you know, you know things like that. Uh, probably the the most important things in your life. And food is uh, very, very important. I like to eat good quality food. I like the way I like to present good good food. Uh, you know, if you look at food, food that looks good usually tastes good. Yes, you're if absolutely. You eat, if you prepare, I'm, I'm very fussy myself. When I prepare a dish, I have mm-hmm. to make sure that it looks perfect and it looks good to, good to eat. Not just because yeah. it has good ingredients, you know, and right. it's cooked good. But you have to, food is a very important thing in your life. That's plays. That's like half of the most important thing in your life would be food, family, you know, religion and things like that. But I think food is way up there on the, on the totem. Yeah. Because, like, like, because I, I, when I buy food, I buy good quality food. I don't buy – I'm not saying the supermarket is a bad to go to, but I'm saying it's like I have to go to specialty stores for certain types of food if I want mm-hmm. my food to come out good. And if I want people to have that food, I want them to enjoy the good quality food, you know. So exactly. Exactly, and if people look at your Facebook uh, account, they'll see definitely what you mean about making it look good. It, yeah. it, so it, it tastes good if it looks good, because everybody, whenever you put up a picture, I know you get all these comments about, oh, save me mm-hmm. some, save me some. So, yes, your food is definitely, definitely looks just as great yeah, as it tastes. Great. Frankie, thank you so much for, for joining us and taking us on a little tour of Boston's North End, which is Boston's Little Italy. And um, much success because I know you have a lot of, I'm sure you're going to be doing a lot more movies and cooking and all of that. So uh, I'm sure we'll have you back as a guest again. And much mm-hmm. success with a good life. So I'm mm-hmm. sure we'll have people. Well, thank um, you very much. Now, thank you. Th- thank you very much, Maria. And thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. And I had a lot of fun, and I enjoyed it. I did, too. Thanks again. Thanks, Frankie. Okay. Take care. Fra- Thank you. Okay. Ciao. Take care.
Thanks for joining us and listening to the Maria Liberati Show. If you try my pasta Norma and want to show it off, take a picture and hashtag it the Maria Liberati Show. Post on social media. We'll be gathering pictures and posting on my website in the next few weeks. Thanks to my producer, Britton Rozelle, and my production intern, Alexandra Krenz, and my guest, chef cookbook author, actor, Frankie Imbergamo from Boston's Little Italy. Go to my website, marialiberati.com, to keep up with my blog and the show and my book series, the basic art of Italian cooking. You can get all the books in the series at my website, marialiberati.com, almost any online bookseller. Push that button to like, share with your friends, join me on Twitter at Maria Liberati, on Instagram at Maria Liberati and Chef underscore Maria Liberati on Facebook at Chef Maria Liberati and on Pinterest at Maria Liberati. And this podcast is heard all over the world on Anchor. Dot FM, Spotify, iTunes, and iHeartRadio, and Radio Republic, and Amazon, and more. So you can catch my podcast anywhere that you listen to your podcast. Don't forget to look for my live cooking events on Instagram and Facebook this month. I'll be doing them for my Friday favorite segments. What does food mean to you? Hashtag your answer. The Maria Liberati Show in a recorded soundbite of 60 seconds or less or a social media post of 50 words or less. Post on social media or email to me at maria at marialiberati.com. They're selected for an upcoming podcast segment. You'll receive an autographed copy of one of my books from the Gourmand World Award-winning series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions or ideas for upcoming segments, email me directly at maria at marialiberati.com. Until next time, peace, love, and pasta.